You need to know about your base ISO, knowing the noise mods and when to change it. That's what makes your work different than others. Welcome back to Cinema Shoot Masterclass. I'm going to explain everything you need to know about ISO. So what is ISO? What is the meaning of ISO? ISO is the internal sensitivity outlook to light in film or digital sensor. The acronym ISO itself is also reference to the international organization standards. However, this organization does far more than defining camera sensitivities. It promotes universal standards for measurement of all different types on international level. And instead of calling it the ISO, the title ISO is in reference of ISOs or ISOs, which means equal in Old Greek. Previously, film sensitivity was also measured as a similar way by another organization, the ASA or American Standard Association. This has been replaced to ISO in modern time, but the measurement itself and the scale remains effectively the same. What is base ISO? This is the one you need to know. The term base ISO or native ISO refers to the unamplified sensitivity of the camera. In other words, the base ISO is a single ISO setting at which your sensor processing pipeline produces its best signal to noise ratio and where the sensor can achieve its full dynamic range. Actual ISO versus a stated ISO. So what's the difference? In theory, on all camera sensors as well as films, ISO settings should be exactly the same. For example, each camera that uses the ISO 100 should receive exactly the same brightness of exposure. Unfortunately, not all camera sensors achieve such precision and some digital cameras are actually slightly more sensitive or less sensitive to light. In another word, ISO 400 may actually behave like an ISO 300 on a certain cameras. For example, generally speaking, these discrepancies are no larger than 1.3 or 1.5 of a stop. How to change the ISO? There are two different things you need to know, the film ISO and the digital ISO. For film photography, ISO refers to the film speed of the film roll. Typically when you are shooting outdoors on a sunny day, it is different than when you're shooting indoor. So if you're shooting a sunny day outdoor, the ISO is 100 to 200. If you're shooting indoors, you would probably switch to an ISO of 800. And what is part is basically you have to go from an outdoor to indoor location quickly. And because of that usually means you would either have to change the role of a film or compensate with your aperture or shutter speed. The great thing about digital camera is that you can change the ISO speed on the fly, making it easy to transit between the exterior and interior shots. On top of that, you can also actually use your LCD screen to see how your image is going to look like in a particular ISO. So low and high ISO noise visibilities are different. ISO affects image quality and noise a lot. In both film and digital photography and shooting films, the higher the ISO, the more grain you'll have in the image. In digital photography, noise is the byproduct of the increased electric charge needed to make the sensor more sensitive to light and look like speckless on the image. The consequences of more noise is a rougher looking image and it decreases the image quality. A lower ISO number means less sensitivity to light and a higher ISO number means more sensitivity. Film has a single ISO rating, meaning that if you put a roll of ISO 400 film in a camera, you will be shooting at ISO 400 for the entire roll. Digital sensors can be set to various ISO speeds depending on the camera model. For example, a Canon 5D Mark IV or 5 natives or ISO base, not including the expanded one. The ISO range is from 100 to 32,000. One stop of a light in terms of ISO is equal to either double or half. For example, ISO 100 is one stop darker than ISO 200, while ISO 400 is one stop brighter than ISO 200. Noise mods. You really want to know this one. Luminance noise versus chroma noise. So different cameras have different thresholds on when this noise starts to degrade the image quality. This is also known as the signal to noise ratio. There are several factors that determine a signal to noise ratio. Aside from the processor of the camera, the megapixel count and the size of the sensor play a role in how well a camera can minimize noise. So two types of noise, luminance noise or luminance noise and chroma noise. Luminance noise retains much of the original color because the type of the noise only affects the brightness of the pixels. Chroma noise on the other hand, looks like colored speckles or grain and is largely unattractive. This is because the noise is affecting the color of the pixels rather than just brightness of the pixels. Luckily, post-processing softwares like um, Lightroom or Premiere Pro, they do a good job in minimizing chroma noise. So what's the best ISO setting for video? Typically, the best ISO setting for video is a low ISO. An ISO between 100 to 200 is going to give you the best results. You also want to consider your camera's native ISOs. What are the native ISOs? The base, they're the ISOs your camera performs best at. 
For example, when it comes to Canon cameras, the native ISOs are 160, 320, 640, 1250, 3200, blah, blah, blah. It's usually structured the same way for other cameras too. You'll, you'll often see that native ISOs are double as they increase. If you stick to native ISOs while brightening or darkening your image, you'll no you, you will notice less grain or get overall a better quality image. So if you're opening up your camera to shoot a video, choose a low ISO like 160 if you're a Canon and 100 if you're on Sony and then brighten up your image if you need to with a shutter speed and aperture. For setting aperture and exposure, we're gonna explain them in another video. But as a beginning when you're choosing what ISO to start with, ask yourself this checklist before adjusting the ISO. Questions you're gonna know. What are the lighting conditions? Is it sunny outside? Is your subject well lit? Or is it too dark or overcast? Can your image handle a certain amount of grain or noise? Some photographers like to keep a certain amount of graininess to their image for the artistic moodiness it creates. So that's another option as well. Are you using a tripod? That's an important one. If so, you have more options when it comes to shutter speed, which I'm gonna explain later on. Therefore, you have more options when it comes back to ISO again. Is your subject in motion? Are you shooting moving objects that you want them to freeze? What are the recommended ISOs for different scenarios? The common ISO values for outdoor with sunny skies in daylight are between 100 to 200. Outdoor with overcast, sunrise and sunsets is going to be about 200 to 400. If it's a well-lit interior, which is called flash indoors, the ISO should be between 400 to 800. 640 is my personal favorite. Semi-lit interior or darker indoor ISO is between 800 to 1600. Nighttime exterior or mainly lit interior indoors at night, the ISO is going to be between 1600 to 3200. If it's an extra low light, you want to use the ISO of 6400 and more. Okay, just a tip for you. If you're shooting a night scene and you're only using a small amount of light support, like you're using a street light, and you need a bit of extra ISO, try to shoot around 12800 ISO on Sony cameras. 12800 is one of the best to work with. Try it yourself and comment the results. So how do you minimize the noise? Or how do you maximize the image quality? So one of the factors that will determine which ISO to use is what shutter speed and aperture combination that you want to use. If you're shooting fast moving subjects that require a fast shutter speed of one to five hundredth of the second or faster, you have to compensate for exposure by either opening up your aperture or increase your ISO. Using a lens that is fast or has a large maximum aperture like 1.8 f of a stop allows you to shoot in a lower ISO as opposed to if you're using a lens with a maximum aperture of a 2.8 f stops. Well, sometimes you don't really have a choice. You have to increase the ISO. You, don't, you can't really play around. This is particularly true for shooting events like wedding reception, where you want to have a fast enough shutter speed to make sure nothing is blurry and your subject and your subjects are well lit. Additionally, if you want to use a small aperture like f16 stops to increase the depth of field for landscape photography, you also have to compensate for exposure and by either using a slower shutter speed or increasing your ISO. Now, if you place your camera on a tripod and you're shooting landscape or the city skyline, then you can shoot during the day or night without having to change your ISO. All you have to do is slow down your shutter speed until you have the correct exposure. Using a high ISO, you should probably raise the ISO if you're shooting at an indoor sport event, especially if your subject is moving fast, you're shooting a landscape without a tripod and you need a deep depth of field or a landscape at night, or doing astrophotography as you know, and you need a reasonable shutter speed to freeze the stars, things like that. Photographing portraits in a dark room or in the evening night, you're shooting an event indoor with limited window light such as a party, or either you're photographing a dark concert, art gallery, church or a building interior. If you're photographing wildlife in the early morning or evening, especially if you need a fast shutter speed. You're photographing fast moving subject and you need an ultra fast shutter speed. That's all you have to consider using a high ISO. Okay, these are the things you need to consider if you want to use a low ISO. Camera base ISO or native ISO. You're shooting motionless landscape and your camera is mounted on a tripod. Or you're photographing portraits in good light. You're photographing an event and you have plenty of window light and you're using flash. If you're photographing products with a powerful artificial lighting setup, you want to lower your ISO. And especially if there is no flash, low light photography, you need to understand the situation. So if the lighting is poor, consider that and you can use a flash to light the portrait subject. However, if you use the flash units, you're going to expose the subject 
and the background to a certain range. You can optimally expose both the portrait subject and the background without the use of a flash at time. So this is all you need to know about ISO to start with, but as you practice more on your camera, you will find what works best for you. And instead of trying doing the same routine all the time, try doing different events, different scenarios with different lighting conditions to get better at finding the correct ISO calibration on your camera. Okay, don't forget to like, subscribe and share our page with your filmmaking squad so they can enjoy this masterclass too. Have a nice day.